Right, we're going to have a look in our car, but uh, it was on my WNG. It had been on there for many years, running whatever fuel was available at the time. I drained it when I laid the engine up. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it would have evaporated anyway, or turned to varnish. Now, be before you actually take it off the bike, it's always a good idea to slacken these off um, so you can get better purchase and it saves you having to put the carb in a vice which is not a good idea and we have fibre washer there Got a little bit of aluminium oxide on it. There's oxide in there, but it's not affected the Mazak too badly. Now, this is a die cast zinc. It has got aluminium oxide on it, and that's almost certainly caused by the water separating from the fuel. The float itself is oily, now that's because I put some Castrolar in the tank when I last ran it. So that all looks good in there. I'll put that back because I don't want to lose it. Well, let's put it there for now. Um, there are only two notches for it to notch onto. Um, so it's not going to be too difficult to figure out what notch is best for your bike. The needle and the brass seat doesn't have any corrosion on it that I can see. But I'll clean all that up before I put it back together. The main jet I'll use a close-up camera to examine these before I clean them. There is also oxidisation on the jet. The, the orifice is clear. Then we have our needle jet. Doesn't appear to be any corrosion on that, but again, I will examine it with the close-up camera. Our slide, a little bit worn, but no corrosion. And the block, ideally use a block of wood to tap that out depending how course it might help if you unscrew that first remember that unscrew that first and there is a larger fiber washer in it not too much corrosion in that yeah I'll put a bit of wood in that and hammer that to drift it out So our pilot jet mixture adjusting screw and this is our slide stop or tick over screw. Line all that up and you can see what we've got and the general condition of it. Now this was using a mix of E5 and Super Plus that might not have had any in it. But I'm going to get the other camera now and have a look at these bits in close up. Can't find the right size piece of wood, I'll use a bit of soft copper just to drift out there the block. I'm 
tapping it on the edge not in the center there almost out a nice, nice tight fit in there um, a little bit of verdigris but no bad serious corrosion at all right let's get a close-up lens right then let's have a look at the extent of any possible corrosion Just a little bit of verdigris there. Uh, and this was mostly run on cheap stuff that's marked E5, but you don't know what the actual exact content of the ethanol is in that. And occasionally on the Super Plus 97 octane. The needle jet's clear, not blocked. The main jet, as we see here, uh, will they ever focus? As you see, a little bit of verdigris build up there, but the orifice itself, you can see, isn't blocked, it is clear. So a little bit of corrosion, probably from the water in the ethanol, rather than the acidic content. The body of the carb itself inside isn't that badly affected so far. That's not to say it won't happen eventually. This is the cadmium plated brass. Not too bad. The inside of the float bowl. Now I did have Castrolar in this. When I last ran the engine and drained it. So there's a little bit of aluminium oxide. I've actually tasted it. Um, it doesn't taste acidic. Like sort of acetic acid acidic. And um, so that's probably done by the water content in the ethanol. But I've seen that with you know other carbs before they put ethanol in petrol. But that's probably caused by it. And again, a little bit of oxidisation. But no damage. So let's give this a little clean up. And pop it back together. Now the pilot jet in this carb is actually pressed into place but you can still clean the orifice with a short and curly taken from a wire brush after I've given them a good poke I will get the airline on them to clean them back blast them the air passages in the block also give them a good clean
have a look at our main jet again. Again, a short and curly from a wire brush, just tug it out with a pair of pliers. Have a focus. We don't know. Yeah, it's focused and give that a, a little poke through. And that's alright. Uh, remove any scale. Now once you've done all that you can put the whole lot in an ultrasonic cleaner to clean it off. But I'm going to do it the hard way and the therapeutic way with polish and elbow grease. Uh, mustn't forget that this is your pilot screw here. The pilot screw hole and the tapered needle communicates with this one here very tiny hole on the back side of the slide nearest to the inlet valve you can see through that that's clear but I have put a little bit of bristle through there so don't forget that what I will say while we've got the close-up lens on is if your carb is flooding all the time check your needle the float needle if it's bent it's no good at all you can get replacements now what you need to do is make sure the seat is clean you put that in there lift it up gently and just twiddle it between your fingers now if it's not seating properly what you can do is get a little bit of rag on the tip of a small screwdriver and just twist it backwards and forwards in there uh, and blow it out make sure you've got it all out and then put a little bit of brasso very fine polish on there and again gently twiddle it between your fingers and that will help seat it it will also change the height slightly but I wouldn't worry about that because it is in microns So it's cleaned up enough, I could have got that up like a mirror if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. I just wanted to examine it to see if leaving ethanol in it, if ethanol remnants had any detrimental effects. And it's had minimal. So let's put the other camera on and start the reassembly. While you're reassembling, look at everything you put back on, just in case there's something you haven't missed. There are only four o-rings uh, o-rings fiber washers in the carb uh, you can get a rebuild kit but I just happen to have a box of assorted fiber washers anyway don't have to put it back together in any order I'm going to put the needle in first I buy that just to make sure it doesn't fall out and I tread on it and then I'm going to push that down onto the first notch make sure it's clicked in that might be a bit high but that's where it wants to go Yeah, I've put it on the second notch now. I think that's where it was in the first place. To get the jet block in, heat up the carb body with a hot air blow lamp. I wouldn't put a naked flame on it. The zinc might melt, but well, obviously you know not to get it that hot. But yeah, I'm going to quickly warm that up. Right, I've got it hot. Now when I say it'll melt, I mean you have to get it bloody hot to melt it. I didn't mean literally melt, but So that's in there, and it's bloody hot. So while that's cooling down, I'm going to check again the needle jet. It is clean inside. I've twisted a bit of rag around in there. 
you need to tighten it up enough to make sure it doesn't vibrate loose and, and fall fall out but you don't need to go mad with it I've checked my main jet again it's clear and clean that's my spanner but anyway then with your replacement fibre washer in the bottom of the jet block holder you can then screw that up this hole has to stay clear if the holder the screw cap actually covers it up then put in a thicker fibre washer or another fibre washer an extra one and do that up firmly don't go mad but you can recheck after it's on the bike then two more replacement o-rings There we go, starting to cool down already. Now while I was cleaning this I did notice a problem with it. In the past someone has over tightened the lid or forced it to undo it. There's a crack you won't see it with this camera but um, it doesn't leak from there but if the float was on the next notch higher it would raise the level enough so it might actually leak from there but it's been all right while I've had it another replacement fiber washer for the little drain screw and we replace our throttle stop Now when you're getting this more or less right probably to have it so it's not pushing the slide up at all just remember when you first start it um, just to hold the throttle open and then quickly adjust it until it's revving high enough and then check out pilot jet taper needle again before screwing that in and as a good starting point as you all know screw it all the way in don't over tighten it just till it touches the seat then back out one and a quarter turns and that's your starting point to start adjusting once you've got the engine running again now slide drops back in there took the choke out because it was causing very erratic running and I lost it but I don't normally use them anyway and there you go it's not because that top's not on it's missed it And there you go all clean no damage once it's on the bike you can then get a little bit more leverage on the jet block to, to do it fully home and, and all the others as well so there you go that's a, a quick strip down an investigation of the 275 pre-monoblock that came off my aerial WNG